I had everything that I thought I wanted. I had a relationship. I had an amazing house. I was making almost six figures. The, the company was very like Google-esque where there was happy hours and all this cool mm -hmm. stuff. So I checked every box at 23 and mm -hmm. was miserable. I just sat there one day and was like, if I don't pursue this, I will always wonder. And I cannot live a life not knowing. I got really strong intuitive guidance that I needed to sell everything and move to Sedona, Arizona, where I had never been. And so I was like, I have this amazing business. Why would I leave? My family is here. And I sat with it and I said, give me a really clear sign. Am I going for maybe a month just to work on a book or am I moving? And I could just feel my heart say, this is it. Oh my and it was just like the craziest, you know, traveling story. And I moved to Ashland, I think maybe a week or two later, I'm obsessed. This house that I'm in, I'm obsessed with. I feel like this house was the, the thing calling me the whole time, but just kind of like the alchemist. It wanted me to have this beautiful journey of experiencing all those places before I found my home. If you do the work, the path will appear. So maybe instead of getting so hung up on what is the right path, what is my purpose, how can I get there? Turn the focus inward. If you heal yourself, the path will show up with such ease and grace. Welcome, Talyn. I'm super thrilled and thankful to have you join us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous day outside <laughs> for you. Yes, it's snowing. It's amazing. Yeah, it looks like a winter wonderland. We're recording this in January and you just had a heavy snowfall. snowfall. Yeah, I just moved to Ashland recently. So I'm I'm from Las Vegas and San Diego and LA. So I've never experienced snow, like living somewhere where it snows. And today was the first day waking up where everything was covered in snow. So I am just elated. <laughs> wow. So you come from much warmer climate, huh? Yes, much, much warmer. And here, luckily, it does never get too crazy. The snow usually melts by the end of the day is what I'm told. So it's kind of nice to have it, but it's not going to be too crazy, <laughs> like having to deal with snow all the time. But I'm really? definitely a warm-blooded gal. <laughs> So tell me, how how did you get there? So what kind of brought you to, is it Oregon? Yes, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what yeah. brought you to the opposite climate from San Diego, for sure. So I went to school in San Diego, and then I moved to Los Angeles to act. I grew up in theater. That was always my big dream after college, and did that for several years, and then did corporate for a few years produced, did interior design, did PR marketing. I've done so many things. And it was a few years ago that I got Reiki certified just to work on myself. And when I moved back to LA after the pandemic, I spent some time in Laguna Beach. I moved back and there was this random room in the house that was just empty. And the girl, you know, that doesn't happen in LA a lot. Like you're paying for every <laughs> square foot. And so I asked my roommate if I could redesign it into this kind of healing space. And she was like, okay. And I put up a table. I started kind of healing my friends on the side and it blew up all by word of mouth. And this was a few years ago. So it was all in person in LA. So I was kind of healing on one end, but then deeply in the entertainment industry on the other side and almost living this kind of double life. And in May of, or actually a few, beginning of 2023, I got really strong intuitive guidance that I needed to sell everything and move to Sedona, Arizona, where I had never been. And so I was like, I have this amazing business. Why would I leave? My family is here. And I sat with it and I said, give me a really clear sign. Am I going for maybe a month just to work on a book or am I moving? And I got evicted the next day. I talk yeah. about the sign. <laughs> it was, and it was nothing I did. It was, it was a familial thing. Uh, my roommate's friend, or my roommate's grandma owned the house. So it was with them, but it was such a clear sign. So I sold everything, drove to Sedona, sight unseen, was there for a few months. It was amazing because it really shed me of a lot of conditioning, superficiality, planning, controlling, just being on the land every day. And all of a sudden, people started asking me for virtual sessions, which I had never done. It was never really a plan of mine, but 
I sat with it. I got a very strong yes. And so I started kind of just having a random session here or there online, which was amazing because I was just traveling for months. I left Sedona. I traveled for a few months through Yosemite and Tahoe and all these delicious places. Yeah. I ended up in Mount Shasta because it was so hot in Sedona. I wanted to go somewhere where it was a little bit cooler in um, August. So I spent a month in Shasta thinking maybe that was the place. Like, am I there yet? And Shasta, the energy there is very intense. It kind of kicked my butt. My car got broken into oh, wow. and I actually had to drive up to Ashland, Oregon to get it fixed. I didn't even know Ashland existed. So I dropped my car off and walked around and there's theater and there's food and there's spirituality. There's a huge writing community. And I could just feel my heart say, this is it. Oh my and it was just like the craziest, you know, traveling story. And I moved to Ashland, I think maybe a week or two later, I'm obsessed. This house that I'm in, I'm obsessed with. I feel like this house was the, the thing calling me the whole time, but just kind of like the alchemist, it <laughs> wanted me to have this beautiful journey of experiencing all those places before I found my home. Oh my God. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so today, right. I looked at some of your, um, Instagram videos, right. Uh -huh. Because I was like thinking, okay, I'll talk to her. I had some ideas, you know, I was like, let me check out some more videos. And you were talking about the alchemist and it's one of my favorite books. Me and too. Now, so I had put it down and I was like, because I was, it's one of those where you go back to and totally. it really spoke to my heart and soul. And I think to so many people, obviously that's why it has become what it's become, but um. And so I, I got my copy out and oh my I God, sitting copy, right there. You're like, I'm like, you're the shepherd boy who's like <laughs> on this journey following these different right signs. Yeah. You know, at the very <laughs> end where you know at the end where spoiler alert if you haven't read it, at the end where he says, Couldn't you have just told me the treasure was here? And spirit or God says, No, then you would have never seen the pyramids. Aren't they beautiful? And when I read that this Christmas, because I read it every Christmas, I started bawling because I was like, it has nothing to do with Sedona or with Shasta or any of these things. It was always Ashland, but God's source universe just wanted me to have the most fulfilling, delicious, amazing time getting here. And it took, you know, six or seven months, but it was so fulfilling. So it just, yeah, I feel really, really grateful. Oh, I love that. And I, as you were talking about the interior design, like I can see like in the background, Yes. You know, if you're listening to it, like in the background, uh, Talon has a beautiful, like this couch and the ambient lighting. And it, it just like looks very, very aesthetically beautiful. So thank you. But, I love it here. <laughs> yeah. And the windows and the light, it just, looks amazing so do you still um so what are you doing right now what are you focused on yeah so the virtual kind of seeds that were planted at the beginning of my journey um have completely grown into a full-time business so I do virtual healing and empowerment containers where I do different type of energy works like breath work reiki tapping um, spiritual counseling. So I have a number of clients that I do three to six to nine week containers with them and okay. really, really get down to what is the seed of not enoughness and how to remove it and empower them to the highest possibility. So that's like, huge in my life. I also do Reiki trainings because I love teaching people to heal themselves mm -hmm. because that's like, instead of giving someone a fish, you teach them to fish. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, a bunch of digital products and meditations. So that is my, my life right now. And then I'm also launching a huge project I've been working on for like three years in May here. And it's a poetry book with photography that I did we recorded all the poems with music. So it's going to be on Spotify and vinyl. There's going to be an art show. So it's like this huge wow. creative endeavor that after three years is finally almost here. Amazing. So you're living this like super creative life, mm -hmm. you know, and working with people and kind of like what you're, what you just described, 
how and then you kind of said that you even worked in corporate and you did all these things like quite a few things you know versus sticking like with one thing for 10 years I'm like thinking how did you have the courage to pivot right to try mm. Yeah, I think I, I'm so grateful. My first or my big first job out of college, I worked at this amazing company called house, this interior design app. And so I did inside sales for them. And okay. I was really, really lucky that at 23, I had everything that I thought I wanted. I had a relationship. I had an amazing house. I was making almost six figures the, the company was very like Google-esque where there was happy hours and all this cool stuff. So I checked every box at 23 and was miserable. And wow. so it was such a gift because everyone else was looking at me with kind of starry eyes of, oh my gosh, I wish I was making that much. I wish I worked there because it was really hard to get a job there. And I would just sit every day at my desk and it overlooked Petco Park, which is beautiful. And I would just stare at the people outside and I'd be like, I, I want to be outside. I don't want to do this. And so because I got it all so early, I realized that even with more money and more promotions, that feeling wasn't going to go away. And so I saved, you know, a, a nest egg and was like, I've always wanted to act. Creativity is in my blood. I've always like written and sang and danced. Like I were, I just am so imaginative and so I just sat there one day and was like, if I don't pursue this, I will always wonder. And I cannot live a life not knowing. Mm -hmm. So I moved to LA. It was the nest egg was gone like that. <laughs> okay. And acting is a hard, hard industry. So it was really hard on my self-confidence, but it was so expansive in so many other ways because just because you chase your dream doesn't mean that it's going to feel good ever or right away. Sometimes one dream is a stepping stone to the right dream. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people maybe would take the leap and try to act. And then when that didn't work, they'd be like, well, I guess everyone else was right. I'm just going to do corporate again. Mm -hmm. And believe me, my brother was saying the same thing to me, you know, like, just get a job. You're so intelligent. Why don't you just get a job? And I was like, I refuse to live a life where I am unhappy every day at work. I refuse. And so with that came years of kind of financial struggle and not knowing what to do, but knowing that I had a non-negotiable, that I would rather like be scrapping around and hustling and be happy than be making a lot of money and be unhappy. So it took a lot of that time, but it's like, I'm kind of in this, I don't know if you know Abraham Hicks at all. She says that you like put stuff into your vortex and finally it like tips. Mm -hmm. I feel like this last year or last year was really the tipping point of all of those years of work and mm -hmm. inspired action and belief finally tipping. Mm -hmm. So it, it took, it took some, it took a while, but I think that the most successful people in life have perseverance of mm -hmm. I don't care if I don't see any results for years, mm -hmm. I will not stop. And I have always had that kind of just, I don't Stubborn. care. If you, yeah. Like, I don't care if you don't see the vision. I know what I have to give to the world and I know what I will be and I will not stop mm -hmm. until I'm there. Mm -hmm. And just having that, yeah, that stubborn perseverance of you can throw as much as you want at the universe. Like I'm going to keep going. <laughs> And is that like just a knowing, like a feeling, or is that actually like a vision of an end result? Mm, that's a great question. I think I used to think it was a specific vision of an end result mm -hmm. because I was so sure of what I wanted. And this year, someone asked me, you know, what, where do you want to be next New Year's Eve? And I kind of laughed because I was like, I could have never a year ago thought that I would be in Ashland, Oregon with a booming virtual healing business. Like that wasn't even on my radar. Mm -hmm. And so I have really started to be less specific with the overall vision. I have, you know, that project I'm launching, I'm doing this other two books I'm launching. So I have like project points, mm -hmm. but for me, it's more the feeling now. 
because I realize that this life that I'm currently living is better than anything I imagined, mm. but I didn't even know I wanted it. So I don't want to limit myself by being too narrow or specific. I'm like, I want to do this, this, and this, but also anything, anything else or better I'm open to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that because especially if you said you didn't know, you know, you would end up like in Ashland, Oregon, right? It's like you were open. Yeah. Just having a specific, okay, I'm going to be there by this time. And it's like this beautiful dance, right? Of kind of directing your life, but also like you said, allowing for something even better, right? That you could not have even imagined right to come in it's so much listening it's like I have a desire for something and I let that desire fill my body Mm. and then I pause before I used to like get get a desire and then attack like I would just hit the ground running with whatever project it was and now I let that desire consume me and then I sit there in my divine feminine energy and say now bring it to me And then slowly I'll start talking about it. And then all of a sudden someone will pop up of like, oh, I know a vinyl person. And I'll be like, oh, beautiful. That was an easy connection. And then I'll, you know, six months will go by and someone says, oh, I have a great book designer. Mm -hmm. So it's really about holding patience until the right thing shows up. Because I used to be such a go-getter that I would force the needle. Yeah, exactly. And I still have that, but I wait for the the ping first and then I attack. And mm-hmm. sometimes I have to sit there in the discomfort of like, I want to just do it right now. But I know if I wait, the perfect person will find me instead of me finding them. I love that. It's so beautiful. So let's say somebody is sitting with that, right? They are in a corporate job. Mm-hmm. And they have that yearning for something better, right? Their soul, their heart and soul is longing for expansion, you know, more abundance, more freedom, whatever it is, right? They just know, they might not know in specifics. And that's, I guess, that's where the quote unquote challenge comes in is like, how long do they, like, maybe they've sat with it for five years, right? So I think in this specific scenario, This requires the leap of faith. In the beginning, it's almost like there has to be this large action on your part showing I'm going to put my happiness first. I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to take the leap even though I can't see the net. And I think that that is the universe seeing that you believe it enough that you're putting your money where your mouth is. So many of my clients, you know, will say, I want this. And then we'll, we'll pick an action plan. And the next week they do the exact opposite. And I'll let them know, eventually you have to have the integrity to do what you say you're going to do. So if you say you hate your job, if you say you want a different life, you have to make the first move and then the universe will match you tenfold. But it's just like that little kid that swims for the first time and doesn't know that they can just stand up. They just have to start swimming and trust that the universe has them. And that first step, I think is sometimes the hardest because it's the scariest, but it is the most integral domino to kind of lead the path of everything else showing up. But you have to trust first. And that first step, what if what if you don't know what that is is it quitting your job without anything like is what is that first step right especially for the person sitting and not knowing like you had at that point of time like acting right kind of on your right right right? Mm -hmm. what if they're like what the heck right I don't know yeah and I think it's, you know, it's really a case by case basis. I would always make sure that someone that was going to take a leap had some type of nest egg like I did, because if you have nothing in the bank account and then you leap, you're then acting, you're making decisions from a place of scarcity, which is not the right magnetic point. So I think the the goal is to have some type of financial security blanket. So you have a little bit of time, but sometimes it does require quitting the job before you know, 
because usually you're so bogged down in the job, you can't even access your higher knowings. You're just so resistant. Yeah, exactly. And so sometimes you need to start saving, get a little nest egg, quit the job and give yourself two weeks to go into a cabin and journal what makes you passionate, journal what your talents are, journal what lights you up. Journal what comes easily to you that doesn't come easily to others. So really having some time to do that inner exploration of what you have to offer the world that feels good to you. And also the acting thing was just a step, right? So I think everyone has something that they like mm -hmm. because the acting didn't even really end up being the thing. So I think if you really look at, you know, what lights me up, if I could get paid to do anything, what is it? I feel like everyone has an idea, just may maybe it could be a scary idea or risky. But some people don't have that. Like, so like that, I think that's like the hardest when you don't know, right? Even what to go for and what to try. Like, what would you say? Like how, so you kind of had this, when did you start getting this connection with that internal guidance? I would say I've always had a type of knowing that I didn't realize what it was. Mm -hmm. I was just always really good at guessing what was going to happen at the end of a movie or a book or being able to guess what was going to happen in friends relationships. So I kind of just always had a, a pretty good gut feeling, mm -hmm. but I would say the two things that were huge for me was doing ayahuasca in 2019 mm -hmm. that completely shifted my life, but I always say it with the caveat of unless it calls to you, it is a powerful medicine that is not for yeah. everyone. Yeah. And then the other one was getting Reiki trained. It was like, we all have the ability to heal. It's how I like to describe it is like, we're, we're a straw that's connected to the heavens and the earth um, automatically, but the world conditioning and everything just kind of pinches the straw until it closes. So it really blocks that universal life force energy. So when you get attuned to Reiki level one, you learn about Reiki, but I also perform an attunement that opens that channel back up. Mm -hmm. And it is so much easier to connect to your intuition, your inner knowing, your angels, the guidance of the earth, once you have that channel flowing again. So did you feel, so what, okay, first was acting, right? So you're in this job in sales mm -hmm. and then you're, your guidance is telling you to go acting is the next thing. Yeah. Okay. And what, and so, and so I was, I was doing the acting thing for a long time. Um, okay. I was partying a lot. I was doing odd jobs. I would say I was pretty emotionally unfulfilled okay. and, um, a year into doing acting, I went through a really hard breakup. So my dad had passed when I was 18 suddenly and I was two months into college, so I didn't deal with it at all. I literally put it in a box and put it away and only expressed the sadness when I drank too much. Mm -hmm. So for years, that box was hidden inside of me. So I, I had a partner. We were together for four years. It was very tumultuous. But when we broke up, it forced me to look at the box of the grief of my father, which nearly destroyed me. So I was living in LA, I was broke, I was trying to act, I was going through this breakup. I felt so lost. I felt so hopeless because I thought by betting on myself and going to LA, things were just gonna work like that. And I was just depressed, I was lost. And my mom, thank goodness, um, she's very conscious, she's a breathwork coach. And she she saw kind of the scariness of how low I was and said, let me just get you a two-week membership to this um, meditation studio called Unplug in LA. She's like, go do, my friend does a breathwork class there, just go. And I was like, okay. So I went, bawled my eyes out in breathwork. I don't know if you've ever done it, but it's emotional. And I went to a class every day for two weeks. And it was the, the little, little sliver of hope that I needed because for that hour every day was the only hour of the day that I didn't feel completely lost and just full of sadness. Mm. So 
that was really the first step I had into spirituality. I started reading spiritual books. I started meditating every day, started doing yoga. So I just, I'm kind of an extremist. So I just started consuming as much as I could because I was like, whoa, this is a food that's actually making me feel better. And so then I really just started my spiritual path, but I never had an intention to make it my business. If anything, I feel like I kind of hid it from my friends for a while because I kind of had these like shallow friendships and didn't want anyone to think I was, you know, weird or woo woo. So again, it was almost this double life of I'd go out and party and hang out with friends, but then I'd be reading the power of now or the alchemist or the vortex. (laughs) And so it was, it was, I kind of towed the line of both worlds for a very long time until the, the call for ayahuasca came in really strong for me. And I did it and that completely changed my life. Like everyone that knows me, there's Talon pre and there's Talon post. So that was a huge revelation of seeing what was possible. It really, you experientially feel the depth of your own soul and your own power, Mm -hmm. but you also just as deeply feel all the pain So it's, that's why I don't ever recommend it unless it calls you because it was one of the hardest experiences of my life, but also one of the best, but both. Yeah. And this is obviously not a prescription or a recommendation. Everybody has their own journey and obviously needs to select, you know, whatever works for them. But, um, oh my God, I just looked and the sky turned this beautiful pink, orange, blue because I'm on the east coast Mm -hmm. you know um and uh but you know the transformation can occur even without you know without you know it's like everybody has their own journey um but so I'm just going back to acting so there was a thing kind of it was on your mind you went for it but it wasn't it was hard it was so hard. <laughs> it wasn't, so was it like a sign, right? Sometimes we have these ideas, right? That we want X, mm-hmm. right? but then the life is like, it kind of like is the thing, right? That you're meant to be doing then kind of what you said, when you started, you set up like in a room, right? Then your friends started and people started asking and it kind of took off easily. Is mm-hmm. the thing that we are meant to be doing in our soul, in our heart and in our soul. Will that end up being pretty easy? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's easier. Mm -hmm. I definitely would say that there's still a lot of work that you have to do and there can still be challenges, but Mm -hmm. those type of challenges are more to stretch you and grow you Mm -hmm. versus I feel like when it's the wrong path, it's more of just doors closing in your face, which Mm -hmm. it's a different feeling. You know, sometimes when you're on the right path, you get rerouted but it's not a door slam. I would say that since I started Reiki and then once I started social media, it just like blew up so easily. And Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, God, my whole life, I feel like I've been pushing this massive, you know, stone up a hill, like working harder than everyone, longer than everyone. And I just, for whatever reason, like I would get far, but not where I wanted And then it was with healing and social media. I, I I just, I showed up, I did it and it was so easy. And I was like, wow, this is really what they mean. Like you said, of when you're meant to do it, it just aligns. The path just shows up. It doesn't show you the whole path, but each piece just shows up and then it shows up. And then, you know, someone was like, oh, can you teach, teach Reiki training? I was like, oh, never thought of doing it, but sure. And now that's growing. And then someone else asked, can you do a membership? I'm like, great. So now that's growing. So I just listen to what people need. And then I follow that avenue instead of trying to figure out what I think people need because we're all so different. So even like with your, like you said, the membership, the, you know, what you offer, you kind of, it ties into what you were saying. It's almost like instead of forcing like first observing that it kind of there's a something that comes to you mm-hmm. right and some yeah, like people literally ask for it and then I'm obsessed with the number three so if something happened three times I always say yes so okay. like within a week three people asked about Reiki training so I was like okay I'll do it 
And then I did think I was going to do a level two. And then same thing, a few months later, someone asked for it. And so I just pay attention. And I will say, I had resistance to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because the universe will tell me, hey, over here, doing Reiki training. And I kind of sat there like a little teenager of like, I don't want it. Like, you know, things were pretty comfortable in my life. I was having sessions one-on-one and I was like, that just sounds kind of like a, like a whole thing. I have to make a manual. I've got to figure it out. I've got to teach it. And I was like, if I meant to do it, make it clear. And then two other people asked the next day. Nice. And I said, okay. So then when I sat down to do it, I had so much fun diving back into it and relearning everything. Because when you go anything we learn in life, you, you remember pieces, but not all of it. And so it was actually this really rewarding experience. And I was like, I'm so glad that I trust the universe so full heartedly, because if that first person asked and I didn't want to, most people would be like, well, I don't want to. So that's my indicator that I shouldn't do it for me. If I have discomfort, that's typically the path that I take instead of turning around because through the discomfort is always the growth you love it you know what i'm looking at your window the snow is softly falling for anybody listening uh, like to the audio it's just the most beautiful like picture i have my i still have my christmas morning <laughs> i know it's so cute oh my god it's like a fairy tale so you're acting, you're working hard, you're kind of pursuing what was on your mind. But like you said, it's not easy. You're kind of running into, even though you're doing it for a while, you're kind of not running into that, not easy success, but at least like things kind of lining up as they did. So walk us through a little more. So what happens? You're trying to act, right? Yeah. How and do you I, connect to Reiki training, right? And you're going yeah. through this grief, you get propelled in this grief, right? I was going to say, so that's an important part, right? I feel like I always knew that shallow things didn't feel good to me, like drinking and partying and shallow conversation, but I did it anyway, because that's just what people did. But I always had this deep inner knowing that I was meant for more and that I should be he healing myself. And so what I want to say about this is that if you don't work on yourself or heal the wounds, the universe will keep giving you signs until it gets really loud. So I felt like the universe was tapping basically since my dad passed. So for seven years, the universe was like, you know, I'd read the power of now and be like, wow, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. But then I'd put it down and go right back to my old life. Mm -hmm. Or I would go to a retreat, you know, and I would, I would feel so good, but I, I didn't have the, the strength mentally yet to put down my other life that didn't feel good because it was all that I knew. And so the universe kept tapping, tapping, tapping. And then with this breakup that really destroyed me and, and brought open the grief of my dad, that was the universe saying, like shaking me, like enough is enough. You have this huge purpose you need to stop wallowing as a victim. You need to deal with your inner trauma because one of the reasons that things are so easy for me is because I've done seven years of work on healing my subconscious beliefs about myself, healing the broken, the conditioning that I grew up with. So I want to make sure that we don't skip over the work is necessary and if you don't do the work, you're going to get a really loud message at some point. Like people will get broken up with, someone will get sick, they'll get sick. There's a death, there's a car accident. Like the universe is going to get you on the right path. So it's easier to just listen. Yeah. So that was kind of my breaking point. And then at that point I was like, okay, I, I really need to do this. So after the breakup, I started being very spiritual. Again, I was kind of keeping it to myself. I continued acting for years. So this wasn't a quick transition. I still was trying to act. I was waitressing. I had the spiritual life on the side. I would bounce back and forth. And then COVID hit. So with that, I left LA. It was not the place to be <laughs> during COVID. And so I went and lived in Laguna Beach with my mom. And... I met this really incredible circle of spiritual friends. 
And it was the first time I spent time with other people that believed the same things that I did. Mm -hmm. So it was no longer me having to hide this part of myself that I thought was embarrassing. We would do bonfires on the beach and we would do cacao ceremonies. And Mm -hmm. it really helped me expand in that sense. And then one of the people in that group, she was a Reiki. Okay. She was Reiki certified. And so whenever I'd see her, I'd be like, can you do Reiki on me? Just a little, like just a little pinch. And so then I started paying for sessions. You know, I would call and do virtual sessions. And so she was like, why don't you just get certified? You know, like you don't have to become a healer, just do level one and heal yourself. And I was like, oh, you're right. So this is probably in 2000 and um, beginning of end of 2020 or beginning of 2021 when things were opening again. And so I was like, oh, great. So I did it just for myself. Again, no plan to help any, like to serve. And there were these things called Reiki share nights where you could go and give and receive for free. So I was working on this young 16 year old girl and didn't know her. And I kept hearing, they're not going to get divorced. They're not going to get divorced over and over and over. And I was just sitting there like, what is going on? I've never had a, a message come through like that. And so the whole rest of the time I'm thinking, should I say something? I don't know what to do. And spirit was like, you have to say something. So I walk up to her at the end and I go, Hey, I don't know if this is going to be really off base. I don't know what's going on, but I kept hearing they're not going to get divorced. And she started bawling and was like, right before this, my parents told me they were separating. And she's like, I'm so afraid that I'm going to have a broken family. And she started crying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, All I know is I was being told that they're not going to get divorced. And that was the first moment I remember driving home and thinking, you know, I did this for myself, but I have a feeling this gift is more than just about me. Wow. And just driving home. And it was a big realization because I had already, I wrote this television show that I pitched to all the networks that almost got picked up, which was amazing but I felt like I had already monetized my creativity. And so I held my spirituality so sacred and so close to my heart. I was like, I don't want to ruin it by turning it into a business because that ruins it for so many people. Mm -hmm. So on that drive home, I was just sitting there feeling like spirit was saying, this is a gift you've been given to help others. And I realized it was just my ego trying to block it Mm -hmm. by saying, you don't want it to be a business. You don't want to ruin it. Your spirituality is about you. And as I was driving home, I was like, but it's not about me. If I can help others, like the look on that girl's face was so much relief. And I was like, if I can do that for anyone, all I wanted my whole life was for someone to help me my whole life. I feel like I've been kind of drowning. I was always kind of battling depression and I was like, all I wanted was for someone to take my hand and tell me it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did for that girl in that moment. And Mm -hmm. as I was driving home, I kind of kicked my ego to the side and said, I don't care what happens. I can't not help people if I can. Mm -hmm. And at that moment was when I decided to do level two, which is about helping others. And so then when I moved back to LA a few months later, that was when I had the room start and the business just exploded by word of mouth. So it was kind of like the universe knocked and said, this is your mission. Are you going to take it? And I reluctantly at first, but then I said, you know, I'll just, I'll just open this little thing in my house and not put a lot of effort into it, you know, nothing too crazy. And then it blew up and people really changed. I watched people change in front of my eyes this year and a half where I had this practice people leaving abusive relationships, people giving up alcohol that had sobriety problems, people leaving jobs they hated. And it just changed me because I realized the whole time with acting and everything, it was like, I wanted to validate myself through others. And then I realized my real talent is validating others of their power. Mm. And getting out of the way and giving them what I always wanted from others. And now I have the gift to give it to others. 
That is so beautiful. And that's so powerful. So you literally like it was in your house and you just kind of by word of mouth and people just start like you got certified mm -hmm. in Reiki too. Like you said, I guess it yeah. sounds like it's when you are able to work with other people's energy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it just happened. Yeah, I, I created a free little website because I'm pretty good, you know, with a computer, created a free little website posted on my story. Hey, if you want to do some Reiki and it's so interesting because I didn't even do ads to the website or my Instagram. I basically just worked on my 10 closest friends and said, Hey, I'll give you a free session. If you want to give me a review. And mm -hmm. then the, the word of mouth from my friends just spread like wildfire. And it was just really incredible. And so I, I continued that for about a year of doing in-person sessions and then also I was still in the entertainment industry. I was still doing set design and producing and um, doing production management. So again, I still was doing, doing, yeah. Yeah, doing this like two worlds thing. Yeah. And then at the beginning of last year, um, kind of similar thing again. I, I hit a really low point and it's kind of a long story, but I hit a low point at the beginning of last year, which this time I was like, okay, hey, I have a toolbox. I know what to do to make me feel better. This isn't like before. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing all of these modalities. And at the time I was feeling a little bit unsure if I was going to continue doing Reiki because I loved it, but my producing was bringing in so much more money that yeah. I was having kind of this, you know, I was like, this feels so good to my heart, but man, this is so much more money. Mm -hmm. And so at the beginning of last year, when I had this low point, I had this, um, RRT session with someone, which is a type of rapid transformation therapy or RTT rapid transformation therapy. Mm -hmm. And she put me into this deep regression and brought me to this moment where my dad missed my play. And it really upset me as a kid, you know? And so in the hypnosis, she goes, now go, go pick up that seven-year-old girl and put her in your arms. And I'm in hypnosis and I'm like, okay, I'll have her. And she goes, now tell her something that she would think is really cool that you've accomplished in your life. And it's so funny because if you had asked me that not in hypnosis, I probably would have said, I pitched a television show to HBO and Amazon and like, how cool is that? But what came out of my mouth was... I heal others with my hands and my younger self started freaking out. She's like, Oh my God, I always knew we were magic. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And she was like, what does that mean? And I was just like, I put my hands on them and they feel better. And she goes, can you please put your hands on me and make me feel better? And I was just bawling, bawling, holding myself, healing myself. And when I finish the session, I go, the reason I'm so unsatisfied is because I'm still trying to live both lives. And so that day I signed up for the Reiki master training and was like, I have to commit to this with my mind, my body and my soul. So even, you know, seven, six or seven years later, after that initial jump, I had another jump. Because I think it was maybe a week after the master training that I got that guidance to go to Sedona. So like the trusting and the jumping doesn't end. It just, you know, like even me, I yeah. hit a point and I had to redirect. Yeah. And as you keep like, like you said, as you keep, you know, it sounds like even you have kept working also, you know, at some points of time with you know, to facilitate your own process with yeah. other practitioners. Yeah. And the work never ends. I think that people always want to be quote unquote better or fixed. Mm -hmm. And it's just always another layer. You know, mm -hmm. I would have never thought that six years into my spiritual journey that I would have had another, what felt at the time, like a rock bottom, but the rock bottom was necessary last year to propel me to the Reiki master because that's what got me to leave LA and do healing full time. And mm -hmm. I needed that. Like I, I need really loud signs. That's just kind of, how I, am. I need the drama. I get them. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like the universe knows that I need like a whack on the head. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just, it's important to know that you can be years on the path and that doesn't mean that there's not still going to be another rock bottom and then another enlightenment. 
like every time you hit a rock bottom, all it is is a redirection. But if you listen, if you, if it's kind of hard to do this over audio, but if you imagine like two freeways running next to each other, you can't hop your car from this freeway to this freeway, right? It's impossible. But a tornado can come and pick up your car and move you over there. Mm. And yeah, a tornado is scary. It's uncomfortable. It wreaks havoc. But sometimes the quickest way to your goal is through this kind of womb of discomfort and chaos because things need to reorient, reorientate themselves that drastically. But is it so I, is you're talking, is the tornado or the chaos or this kind of slap down needed only because like you had the feeling, right? Like you said, it still wasn't fulfilling you inside, right? But you kept doing it because your mind was telling you, I have the money, right? It's all the rational reasons because you were not listening. So is exactly. that the tornado? <laughs> exactly. So like, let, to continue with the metaphor, there was a bunch of off ramps to the other freeway, did, right? Like, exactly. <laughs> but I just was like, nope, you nope. need the tornado. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's also my journey. Some people are better. At, I think now I'm so good at it now. Like I see the exit first time and I'm like, oh, this is, this is, this is time to get I'm off. Listening. Yeah. This doesn't feel good anymore. I'm off. But it took, you know, I'm a stubborn person as we've established. So it took me, it took me a few tornadoes. <laughs> it took me a few tornadoes. But I will say that now I feel like that. I don't think there's going to be another tornado. I truly don't. I think that I am so open and I listen. And now I have a better sense. I've worked, you know, hundreds of hours with clients, which has really strengthened my own intuition. So it's also much easier for me to hear my own guidance now. So can you tell me like for the, for the very accomplished woman, right? Who can do and is successful, right? And is making the money and from all the outside, you know, standards, like kind of even how you felt and how you were, right? Everything, you know, you can pay for your living. You can, you can provide a good living for yourself and, you know, even your family, everything looks like buttoned up from the outside right but inside somewhere that disconnect has happened right that you know she feels some emptiness and that it's not aligned right that it's kind of going through the motions but deeper inside there's this longing this desire this yearning like you mm -hmm. said this knowing that you're meant for more there's something bigger that years are just going by how can and she's probably doing like meditation, yoga, you know, yeah, she's, like, yeah, conscious. Already, already, you know, some of the self work, but how, you know, obviously the busyness, taking care of things, you know, even kids and family, how can she strengthen that connection with that inner guidance? Yeah. Um, there's so many ways, but the first thing that comes to mind right now is space. And so I know a woman like that's probably busy and has a ton of things going on. And even if maybe they book out some rest, you know, then a client comes and they say, oh, forget the rest. I'm going to handle the client. So I would say taking a weekend and being offline, getting all things you have to do out of the way, going someplace that is not your home, going, okay. to, going to a new surrounding because a new surrounding makes you very present. That's why people love vacation so much. They just don't realize it. So if you go to this new place, even for just like a day or two and just create the space, turn your phone off, turn your laptop off, no TV, and just allow space to hear it because most people have music going and the TV's going and then their phone's going. There's okay. literally, there's not space. You literally can't hear it. And so as absurd as it may feel, just sitting in the middle of the room and just saying, what do you sound like? I would like to connect more with my inner knowing because intention is so powerful. Please show me in this moment what you sound like and have this conversation with your guides and your higher self because a lot of the times it's in our own head, but it sounds a little, it always happens where the balloons go. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? We just had a bunch of balloons go. <laughs> yeah. 
And so just asking, I think that people don't realize how strong intention is mm-hmm. and asking. You have to ask to get an answer. So just sitting there and maybe having a journal and, you know, if you, it feels good to do some sage, you know, whatever feels good and just saying, how can I strengthen this connection? Pick up your pen and see what comes through. Just free ride it. Mm-hmm. And then just sit there. And it doesn't even have to be a meditation. Just ask. I want to deep, deepen my connection with my guidance. I ask for that now. And then imagine the light coming in from the top of your head and connecting you literally to your highest self. And just creating this space for your soul to be heard. Because your soul is talking to you all day, every day, songs, emails, everywhere. But most people aren't paying attention. So it's almost like a a radio dial. We want to like turn your third eye radio dial back to the station of your highest self. Mm -hmm. So just ask for that, you know, recalibrate me to my highest knowing and just ask and see what comes through. And then, you know, go outside, be in nature, be present, be playful, you know, sing and dance around, kind of get in that childlike energy. And then maybe in the nighttime, write a list of what lights you up. If you could get paid to do anything, what would it be? Hmm. That's the first question. The second question is, what are you inherently good at that you don't have to work at? Because I think that's a really big one. Everyone, you know, some people are really good at cooking or some people are like, I just, I've always been a passionate storyteller. All my friends, any supplement I try or anything I do, everyone does it because I get so excited. So that's just something that lives in me that I don't think about as something that I do well. And that was something a coach pointed out to me. She was like, you're in you inherently have ability to inspire just by being yourself because you're passionate. Mm -hmm. So looking for what that is that you do easily. Mm -hmm. And then third, what do you not resonate with in your life? Mm -hmm. What about the job doesn't feel good? Is it pay? Is it hours? Is it the people you work with? And figuring out what exactly that is because we want to figure out what doesn't resonate so we can make sure we're not calling that in in the next thing. And that doesn't sound like it's hard, but believe me, that Sometimes starts it's not clear. It's not clear because like you don't even know it might not, it could be the people, but you don't know hundred until... percent. But this is but this is why you have to create the space, create that inner connection so you do know because there's been a few times you've said, well that person doesn't know. They do know in their soul. Their mind doesn't understand. Their mind is not reading the information and understanding why it doesn't feel good, but the soul knows why it's not resonating. Mm -hmm. So if you create the space, create the container, ask for the connection, and then ask the the questions, the answers will come through because they live in you as facts. We just aren't the best always at perceiving and understanding it. I love that. Do you have to be alone? I think in this case, it is helpful because the point of the aloneness is that there's nothing, you're not hearing anything through your ears beside your highest self. Mm. And I think that if you wanted to do it with a friend, maybe you just carve out one day of it. Like if you do a weekend with a girlfriend, one day where you guys are both just in your own rooms, completely alone. And just making sure you're giving yourself that space. But I do know that community and, you know, doing things together is also very valuable. And also, you know, working with the healer is really valuable too, because they can usually read your energy and figuring out what's kind of going on under the hood. But I just like that first way, because it's something that anyone can do. Anyone can usually get away for one day Mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, get away from your house, even if you have a beautiful house or whatever. You need to, yeah, you got to change. You got to change the environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And it's interesting. It's also this beautiful alchemy. I call it inner alchemy (laughs) of uh, when you, because even for you, right? The Reiki came through not necessarily you sitting alone or being alone and getting that answer. It came through a person. Yeah, totally. And I think that, At that point, 
after the ayahuasca, I was much more connected. So I think that there's kind of different levels of it where it took me years of meditating on my own and doing breath work on my own to strengthen that connection. The Reiki came, you know, now most of my signs are through other people or are through like media, or I do get, I do get random thoughts where I'm like, oh, I should do that. And then it, that's, that's the ping. But that was after years of really cleaning the vessel and eating better and working out and daily meditation. So it kind of just depends on like where you are with your connection. If you feel like you're not he hearing it, then that's why it's really imperative to do kind of that weekend thing that I mentioned. Yeah, that's a great explanation. I love that. Tell me how, how did your name come about? <laughs> I wish it was a better story because um, people always ask. So my parents were sure I was a boy. They didn't check my gender, but they just decided I for sure was a boy. So <laughs> my name was going to be Spencer, which is my middle name. That's and, <laughs> and, which is funny too, because I, I, I used to have so much masculine energy. So it's kind of funny because I'm like, I'm kind of a man, like in a girl's body. Um, but <laughs> Um, so they had no name prepared. They were living in Reno at the time. And apparently there was this really like well-known pawn shop family that were really wealthy because my parents were, you know, like lower class at this point. And they had named their daughter Talon, but they had spelt it differently. I think it was maybe T-A-L-A-N. And so they were like, well, what about Talon? But we'll just add a Y to it and just make it cool. <laughs> so that was, that's how it came to be. I love it. You know, first I was, you know, um, there's a small country called Estonia that, you know, but it's spelled the Talon, T-A-L-L-I-N. Yeah, people always, yeah, Estonia. people always bring that up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful name. And I loved how cleverly you, um, it's your imagination, right? The creativity, the talented is mm -hmm. your, your it handle. Was, it was literally my MySpace name. And I have been wanting to use it for something since I was like 13 years old. So it's just so funny, right? Again, there was, this was always the path. I just had no idea, but that seed was planted so long ago. That's some of the pre-work was that. Yeah. <laughs> do you still do design? Do you still do interior design? So I do so for some close friends with interior design, same. I never create, I never even created a website. I had a few friends that saw my home in LA and were like, whoa, can you just do this? So I did furnishings for a few people in LA. And then I've actually done a, a couple full home remodels in, wow. I've done in Las Vegas and one in San Diego, all with the same client. He was a family friend who hired me. And then I redid his place in Vegas, like gutted it top to bottom furnishings. And so then he hired me to do his home, his vacation home in San Diego. And then he moved years later in, El in Vegas. So I'm quite experienced, but again, it's not something I pursue because I really enjoy it. But, and like, I love furnishing my own home, attention to detail. I'm a tourist rising. So like beauty and luxury is really important to me, but it's not something I typically do unless someone asks me about it. So yeah, it's just yeah. you know, one of those things. I love it. Because I was like, um, I lost my train of thought, but uh, I, it, something was something was on my <laughs> mind. But I, you know, it kind of just ties into the creativity, and it ties also into kind of how you wait for a sign invitation or call it whatever invitation. You... I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you done human design for yourself? I, yes, I'm a generator. The generator, because it's a, funny because like projector right is one of the human design types and that's their theme is to wait for an invitation uh, yeah but, but theme for I for others. and I forget like I'm a generator but my reaction is to respond so okay. actually okay. yeah finding that out a few years ago was something that helped me shift because I never responded I had a desire and I just like I said I would just go full steam ahead and so I remember reading that and being like wait what I'm supposed to stop and respond. It blew my mind because pause was not in my vocabulary. Patience also used to not be in my vocabulary. So that a few years ago really opened me up to the possibility of, wait, if I just pause, maybe this is, maybe it's easier than what I'm doing, which feels like swimming up, you know, upstream. Yeah. So that was a huge part. Human design is really helpful to figure out how you're supposed to mm -hmm. exist and respond in the world. 
Oh, that's cool. Okay, that makes sense. And did you, um, can you describe the difference, right? Then the difference that you felt, right, in acting and now doing the energy healing, right? The insight on the inside. Yeah, so it's hard. So I adore acting as a as a thing to do. I absolutely love getting inside of another character and being that and existing in that. And I have so much love for acting, but I think at the time I was so unhealed that I took this thing that I loved that was acting and I was using it as a way to validate myself. I was using it to become quote unquote famous and to be in big movies because I didn't feel loved or good enough. And so I wanted to validate myself externally through acting. Mm -hmm. So I think the root of my insides was different where now I feel so fulfilled. I really don't care what anyone thinks. I'm so in love with myself in like a passionate, intimate way where before I was really confident, but right underneath was insecurity. It was a very, it was interesting even to live because I was really confident, but I also was really beholden to what people thought about me. And I think the difference is now is that I put others first. I think with acting, it was all me, 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 me. I want to be famous and I want to do this. And now with serving, it's how can I help you? You are the person that is mo the most important in the room is the other person. And how can I unlock their power? So I think it just was more of a shift of perspective of my intention is no longer about me. It's just about the other person. And I think that serving is the most fulfilling thing that anyone can really experience. I love that. And the reason I asked is because, you know, how can somebody know, mm -hmm. right, that they are starting to be on the right path, right, is because I think even with acting, you mentioned kind of some sort of emptiness still, when you were doing it. So do you think it was the thing that you were doing or was it because the stage you were in kind of, you didn't feel whole? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it's the second one. I think it had less to do about the acting and more to do about me just not feeling whole because I've actually been looking into some like theater and plays here because I miss acting. I acted for my entire childhood. I did theater but I think that now I would do it from such a place of fun and play and curiosity instead of seeking validation. Like I used to do it for, even when I did theater growing up, there was a lot of, you know, like I, I got the lead and it was a big deal and it validated me. So I think it had less to do with, like you said about the thing and more to do with me. So mm -hmm. I think that the main takeaway for people is if you do the work the path will appear. So maybe instead of getting so hung up on what is the right path? What is my purpose? How can I get there? Turn the focus inward. If you heal yourself, the path will show up with such ease and grace. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I think that as humans, we want to skip the, the hard part here and just go, you know, mm -hmm. jump on the freeway. And it's like, make sure that the car works first, make sure it's got gas, make sure there's an oil machine. You want to just make sure that you have the foundation to hold your dream. You can get everything you've ever wanted, but if you haven't healed yourself inside, it's going to feel empty because that's just the, the whole point. And there's this also a narrative, keep moving, keep doing, like if you, you know, kind of just keep acting and then the path will appear, you know? So it's like, and the world tells you, oh my God. And then you get into, I will miss out if I don't do, do, do. Mm -hmm. And how many successful people do interviews of like, money is not going to make you feel good. Believe me, I have a ton of it. Like we hear this constantly, people that have achieved ultimate success in our eyes. Mm -hmm. And they're like, look, it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. And then a lot of them embark on a spiritual journey because they're still searching for something, even though they're mega business people or superstars or whatever they are, athletes. So it's just, it's so annoying when you're at the bottom of the pyramid when the top of the pyramid's like I promise you know it's it's not that great up here at the bottom you're like well let me see for myself <laughs> you know I think but, it's scary also who said I wish oh, I could, yeah. everybody could experience this just to know it's not gonna 
change anything. And that's how I, I got that in a much smaller scale. I got that gift at 23 when I was making good money and was kind of like, wait, what? This is, this is it. This is like my goal. This is so empty. But even with that, I still had years that I struggled. You know, there were many times where I was like, when you, when you, tr when you blaze a new path, it is more difficult. Mm -hmm. So there were many times on my path where I kind of sat there. I would say that my overall belief that I would do it never wavered, but as like an overall theme, but there were definitely dark periods for, I would just be sitting and crying and being like, maybe I'm not special. Maybe I just need to get a corporate job and, you know, just jump back into this awful machine because I can't do it anymore. But I never let myself because I decided that I am special because everyone is special and has something special to give to the world. And I just never stopped. And now it's paying off and it's just going to get bigger from here. But I just want people to realize that it's not always easy, but it is so F word worth it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, you know, I'm just thinking like, what is this dance, this balance between thinking, believing that you have to heal versus knowing that not versus might not be the right word, knowing that you are special already and whole as you are. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting idea because when you're in the healing world for a while, you get to a point where you realize that so much of the ritual in healing is just for the human brain. Exactly. Like, because it can, it can also become like, like, it, like another checkbox, right? Like all totally. the, all these like morning routines, you know, like, you know, and then you're like, you just get on another supposedly more spiritual to do list. Exactly. And then you shame yourself if you didn't do your morning routine or, you know, you had a blowout and you're like, oh my God, now I'm not going to mess manifest because I messed up. So it's really interesting, right? I think the human is always trying to conceptualize and figure it out and logistically get it. Because I think that I'm at the point now where I kind of laugh, where I'm like, anyone can basically just like, there's, I think it was, um, who wrote the power of now? What's his name? Um, uh, Eckhart Tolle? Yeah, he had this incredible spiritual awakening sitting on a bench where it was just like almost like the, committed a suicide, right? Yeah, but he but like oh wait, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah, he almost committed suicide and then had this like revelation, mm -hmm. and it was like for in that moment everything changed. Mm -hmm. That is not the typical way to enlightenment, but I have realized now after taking the tornado lane path of seven years of a roller coaster ride that I'm just like, wow, we are so powerful that in one moment we can truly decide I will have my dream. I'm worthy. I'm deserving. And I call it forth now. And if you actually believe it with every cell of your body will change and pull that dream in like Dispenza teaches, the more you sit in your future reality, it pulls it to you. And I do think a lot of these full moon ceremonies and all these different things sometimes are a little bit more just ritualistic for the human to feel good. And, yeah, there's yeah, nothing, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. It's still better to go to a full moon ceremony than go, you know, do drugs yeah, till 2 a.m. <laughs> so, so repeat it. I will. I don't even know. <laughs> no, you, you can you repeat that intention, that affirmation, right? That statement. I will have. Okay, let me, so usually when I talk, I'm just kind of channeling. Okay, so I will have the life of my dreams. I call my purpose to me now. I am worthy. I am deserving. I am enough. And it is mine now. Mm. Sit with it. I just went like, because like, it really, I think it was powerful. I said it and, and I just wanted to prolong that moment, right? Um, so thank you. That yeah, is of course. How can people connect with you, follow you, and get more more of you? Yeah, yes. So my Instagram is my first and last name, which is Talon Fiori. And I do a ton of just free tips and tricks on there of just how to empower you in your everyday life. And my TikTok is at talented underscore. 
And my website is talentedreiki.com. And on there, you can find tons of trainings. I've got digital sessions. I do one-on-one -on -one containers if you're really ready to take your life to the next level. So there are a lot of ways to work with me. I also have like a membership if you're looking for just an easier way to have access to a lot of my products. There's the daily Reiki videos. There's a breathwork session, Reiki session. So that's like a monthly membership called A Talented Life where you can be in a community of like-minded healers. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much. And what my hope, so the, my intention really was today to shine the light on you, right? To bring forward what you're doing in this world. And also just that you are that connector, kind of like that Reiki master was for you, right? When you met that person and yes. start something that this conversation right i think this like in this world like so, like when we pay attention like these signs align like people like you said people conversations you know we get ideas for what's possible from others totally and open up kind of our own realm of possibilities. So thank yeah. you so much for being that, Talon. Yeah, and I just want everyone listening or watching to know that your dream life is possible. It is your birthright, period. Mm -hmm. Nothing you have to earn or achieve. You deserve it because you exist. And mm -hmm. that is enough. And just call it forth. Thank you. Thank you for speaking power into and life into this world and into yeah this. yeah and thank you so much too for having me you've been wonderful